Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day everyone Welcome back to your week 9 of lecture So for this week, for subject PC 562 We're gonna discuss on the pharmacotherapy of psychosis as well as the mania So for this week topic, I divided into 4 videos So for this video, which is the first video You should be able to cover the first two learning objectives you need to be able to describe as well as discuss the pathogenesis of uh, psychosis as well as the schizophrenia. Besides that, you should be able to discuss the hypothesis, the dopamine hypothesis that is associated with schizophrenia as well as the antipsychotic agents. The next video, the second video, you should be able to uh, discuss the therapeutic efficacy as well as the adverse effects of the typical psychosis and then the next video, the third video, you should be able to discuss the therapeutic effects as well as the adverse effects of the atypical antipsychotic agents besides that you should know how to compare and contrast between these two uh, group of class of antipsychotics and the last video, you should be able to discuss as well as describe the pharmacotherapy of mania Psychosis is a symptoms of mental illnesses that characterized by a distorted or non-existent sense of reality. Usually, these psychotic disorder have different etiologies, and each of these etiologies demand a specific and unique of treatment approach. So, the most common psychotic disorder are listed here, which are the mood disorders, either major depression or mania with psychotic features, substance that induce psychotics as well as some uh, disease can able to induce psychosis features such as the dementia as well as the delirium and delusional disorder besides that psychoaffective disorder as well as the schizophrenia so patient with schizophrenia they exhibit features beyond those seen in other psychotic illnesses so the most common psychotic the most common symptom of psychosis are hallucinations delusional, disorganized speech, as well as the disorganized behavior. So these four symptoms commonly known as positive symptoms. So in addition to positive symptoms, schizophrenia patients also suffer the negative symptoms such as apathy as well as the allogia. Besides that, psycho, uh, schizophrenia patient also experiences the cognitive deficits. So before we discuss in depth of the pharmacotherapy of psychosis, it is important for you to have a clear picture on the pathophysiology of psychotic, which will determine the effective treatment of each of the psychotic disorders. So I will integrate what you have learned in my previous topic, especially in the reticular activity system with the pathophysiology of clinical psychotic features. So all the psychotic patients experience positive symptoms such as hallucinations, uh, delusional, disorganized speech as well as the disorganized behavior. So what actually happened? So one of the reasons is too much or excess of dopamine neurotransmitter in the brain due to the projection from the ventral tegmental uh, nucleus. As you can see in this uh, diagram, the green color represents the, the, the sensory pathway for the dopamine that, pro that originates from the ventral tegmental nucleus. So there will be excrete a lot of dopamine neurotransmitters which will activate the dopamine receptors especially the D1 and D2 receptors so once this dopamine receptor being activated it will increasing the neuronal response to glutamate as I mentioned before, before this glutamate is the major excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain so not only the dopamine, serotonin also involves the uh, excretion of the glutamate. So serotonin, the red color here, uh, projected from the dorsal rough nucleus. So it will activate the serotonin receptors, especially the serotonin 2A as well as serotonin 2C. So it will facilitate the release of glutamate. 
So GABA is the interneurons, as you can see in this picture, uh, GABA is the inhibitory neurotransmitter, will be disinhibited. So once it will be disinhibited, especially in the cerebral cortex, it will induce the release of glutamate and excitation of the pyramidal neurons. So too much of this glutamate or excessive of the glutamate will respond, cause the thalamic nuclei as you can see in this purple color, relay the sensory information to the pyramidal neurons in the limbic cortex as well as the neocortex. So some of the uh, dementia as well as delirium patients will experience psychotic futures due to the deficiency in cholinergic neurotransmitters. This due to the drug itself uh, can cause or has the anticholinergic properties not only that because of the disease itself or the age uh, cause the neuronal loss in the brain uh, to those who are or abuser or drug abuse or the substance that they consume can induce the psychotic futures due to the excessive of dopamine in the brain so the substance such as amphetamine uh, will decrease the presynaptic neurotransmitters as well as will inhibit the dopamine reuptake. Not only that, uh, levodopa can also increase the dopamine availability in the brain. And to those who uh, use the NMDA antagonist such as ketamine will decrease the glutamate that mediate the tonic inhibition of dopamine release so that will cause the excessive of dopamine in the brain so unlike other psychotic disorders schizophrenia as well as the psychoaffective disorder patient experience this negative symptom as well as cognitive dysfunction so i would like to highlight the words of schizophrenia so the words of schizoph schizophrenia means split mind but it doesn't represent split personality or multiple personalities the term of split minds refer to what sometimes we call a split from reality so basically what happened in schizophrenia patient there are a deficiency in integrating the thought and perception with the emotions that is why schizophrenic individuals find it difficult to separate what is real or what is not so these negative symptoms tends to be associated with a significant social burden as well as poor outcome. So I can uh, categorize these negative symptoms can be uh, into two groups which are decreased in emotional expression as well as the evolution or known as apathy. So what actually happened? Uh, in one of the guidelines that used to diagnose of schizophrenia, which is the DSM-5, list this negative symptom as one of these five criteria to diagnose as schizophrenia. So the negative domain of schizophrenia can be classified as the deficit in motivations, we call it as evolution, uh, decrease in experiencing uh, pleasure or known as anhedonia, uh, decrease in social interaction or asociality, decrease in verbal communication, elogia, as well as decrease in the emotional expression. So the pathophysiology of negative symptom is different from the positive symptom. So let's recap back. Uh, positive symptoms predominantly mediated by the mesolimbic pathway and involve the dopamine, serotonin, as well as glutamate new networks. So for these negative symptoms, on the other hand, it will involve this prefrontal cortex area of the brain, which is known as mesocortical pathway. So there will lacking of dopamine activity, or we call it as hypodopaminergic signaling in this prefrontal cortex areas that cause these underlying factors of negative symptoms. So our main concern here is more on towards the dopaminergic pathways that are related to the schizophrenia as well as the uh, antipsychotic drugs. So this image shows an integration of the four dopamine pathways that we'll be talking about. 
So it is essential that we learn about this dopamine projection before studying how antipsychotics modify these dopaminergic neurotransmissions. By blocking this pathway, antipsychotics can produce uh, the therapeutic effects as well as the adverse effects. So the four pathways relevant uh, to the pharmacology of antipsychotics in the treatment of schizophrenia are the mesolimbic pathway uh, that will associate the positive symptoms, the pink color one. The mesocortical pathways, the green color one, the green color will uh, associate with these negative symptoms. Besides that, we also have the negostratal pathway that will involve the extraparameter symptoms and tardif dyskinesia as well as the tuberal infodilobular pathway that will induce the prolactin release or known as hyperprolactinemia. So as I just said, the mesolimbic pathway is relevant to the positive symptom of schizophrenia. So the words of meso used in the formation of compound word meaning middle. So and the limbic system uh, represents a group of subcortical forebrain structures uh, that represent the hypothalamus, hippocampus as well as amygdala. So these uh, regions influence the emotions and motivations. So mesolimbic tract is one of the main dopaminergic pathways in the brain. So it begins in the ventral tegmental area of the midbrain and connects to the nucleus accumbens as well as the stratum. So this mesolimbic pathway also plays a key and complex role in motivation, emotions, rewards and positive symptoms of schizophrenia. So what actually happens? All the antipsychotic drugs have the ability to reduce these dopaminergic neurotransmitters by uh, inhibit the dopamine receptors, especially as in the D2 receptors, we known as D2 antagonists. So these drugs or D2 antagonists can reduce the positive symptom of schizophrenia. So for negative and cognitive symptom of schizophrenia. Is actually associated with hypofunction of the mesocortical pathway means that uh, they will reduce the dopamine uh, activity in this mesocortical pathway. So this tract is made up of dopaminergic neurons that project also from the ventral tegmental area to the prefrontal cortex. So this mesocortical pathway is thought to be relevant to the physiology of cognition and executive function, especially in the uh, desolateral prefrontal cortex, as well as it will affect the emotion and effects, especially in the ventral medial prefrontal cortex. As I just mentioned, hypofunction of the mesocortical pathway might be related to the cognitive and negative symptom of schizophrenia. So the negostratal pathways, uh, the red color one here, is part of the extra pyramidal nervous system that plays a key role in controlling motor movements. So in untreated schizophrenia, dopaminergic activity in the negostratal pathway is relatively normal. So in contrast, when dopaminergic activity is deficient in this pathway, uh, due to the antipsychosis drug, which is the D2 antagonist, it can cause the extra pyramidal symptoms, including the Parkinson like disease such as tremor and rigidity. So, in contrast, when too much of dopamine being stimulated or excess in this pathway, it can cause hyperkinetic movements such as stick, curls, and dyskinesia, as observed in the tardive dyskinesia patient. So, for this tuberal infundibular pathway, dopaminergic neurons in the tuberal regions uh, of the hypothalamus will project to the infundibular region involved in the prolactin release. So, these D2 receptors, which is the tonic release of dopamine by the neuron in this pathway, normally act as a break to inhibit the prolactin release. In contrast, the stimulation of serotonin 2A receptors in this pituitary can act to stimulate the release of prolactin. 
so we will discuss more detail uh, later in when we discuss on the typical antipsychotic is due to typical antipsychotic or known as first generation antipsychotics can block these D2 receptors which interfere with the normal physiology of this pathway so it will elevate the prolactin level and associated the symptoms such as hyperprolactinemia uh, in contrast for the second generations of antipsychotics there has dual antagonism of both D2 and serotonin receptors. So, these drugs or second generation antipsychotics will produce a more balanced effect. So, there is no much changes in the term of prolactin release. So, there is low incidence of endocrine side effects. So, before we have a break, uh, before we discuss further on the first generation of antipsychotic or not as typical antipsychosis so let's have recap back what you have learned uh, in this video so the hyperactivation from the ventral tegmental area to limbic areas might be related to the positive symptom of schizophrenia meanwhile hypofunction of this mesocortical pathway explain the cognitive and negative symptom of schizophrenia uh, beside that, the red color one, which is the uh, negotiation pathway, the blockage of this pathway can cause the extra pyramidal symptom. Meanwhile, uh, the blockage of this uh, dopamine in the tuberoinfundibular pathway will increase the prolactin in the blood level.